Oh, hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm just going to be looking back on 2022. I'll be talking about a few plans, some things that have changed and a lot of deeper stuff, um, especially looking at my transition into this full-time job, I guess, and also goals and what I wanna see in the future of this channel. I really don't know where we should begin. I typed a few things. Okay, I guess we'll start off with plant specific things. Things that I learned this year that really is going to change the way I grow plants. One of the biggest things is moss poles. I love moss poles now and I love growing plants on moss poles. I think before I wasn't organized enough to, you know, keep on top of the watering on the moss pole, but it does really benefit the plant. I'm not saying that that's the only way to grow big plants. There are a lot of plants that I grew really big and they weren't attached to a moss pole. They were just tied to a stake. But I do think support wise, humidity wise, and just having those roots latch onto something really helps in getting your plant to a more mature form, but I'm definitely going to use them more in my collection. So I mean, in the beginning of 2022, I would never think I would grow plants on moss poles again because I really didn't like them. Okay, the second one is about anthuriums. Even before this year, last year, and even in 2020, there's a lot of fear growing anthuriums because people always say that they're very hard to grow. Seeing this year, the majority of my anthuriums just take off really just made me realize that anyone can do it and it's not that difficult guys give them the right nutrition keeping on top of the watering making sure their roots have a lot of air around them and i've definitely not perfected it guys i know that my anthuriums have holes in them and it's a combination of me either moving plants around the new leaf wall it's unfurling bashing into something or it could just be the anthurium requires high humidity moving forward into the new year with anthuriums and growing anthuriums i really want to see because you guys know that I like to push the limits when it comes to growing plants. I wanna see and test out for myself how anthuriums grow in lower humidity. And you can get huge growth in lower humidity. It's about 34% humidity right now. Looking into the new year, I do wanna get more anthuriums. I feel like that's the plant family that I want to buy more of. Like I wanna buy more anthuriums in 2023. And also pollinating. Like I, I'm really excited, fingers crossed, that I will have luck with pollination in 2023 but we will just see guys i know it's a long process so it might have to go into 2024 but i'm gonna try it we're gonna see how it goes i feel like that point went all over the place and i apologize the next point is talking about growing my plants in leca and really pushing the limits of when to change the nutrient solution you know before i would change the nutrient solution every two weeks to the day like i was very strict about it and so around the summer i started to push it maybe a week so i did every three weeks now i'm doing every four and it's different in the winter time because on average it's a lot cooler for plants not under a grow light they're not utilizing the water or nutrients and therefore the nutrient solution lasts longer and even in the summertime even if the nutrient solution was gone i would just put plain tap water in its place for the time being and they did fine so i think when you're looking at time and also like is it worth doing your entire collection of changing your nutrient solutions you can definitely push it a little bit and your plants are more resilient than you think. Okay, the fourth one is about philodendrons. It's weird, maybe I haven't seen one recently that I really liked, but I'm kind of slowly losing interest when it comes to philodendrons. It's so weird. I said this before, but I think my top three plants are anthuriums, hoyas, and monsteras, which is so weird. I would have never thought that before. And you all know I have my favorites. Like obviously my philodendron strawberry shake is one of my favorites. But as a whole, guys, I don't know. I think because I had a lot of philodendrons in the past, especially starting my plant journey, I guess I grew a lot of them and then I didn't see any more that interests me. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's very low in like the plants that I want to buy more of. Like I want to buy more Hoyas. I want to buy more Anthuriums. I want to buy more Monsteras. I would choose buying more Syndapsis before Philodendron. It's really strange. So we'll see if there's any more that interests me in the new year. Um, obviously that might change. But right now, I don't know if I want to buy anymore. I do want to talk about, and we're going to go a little bit deep here. I do want to talk about quitting my job 
doing this full-time because I quit my full-time job in September of this year. So it's still pretty fresh. Like it's been like four months now. Thinking about the first half of this year, it really is a blur. And the reason why it was such a blur is because I was so unhappy and just sad. It's frustrating because where I worked is a great place. And that's how I knew that I wasn't in the right spot because it was a job that was fantastic. Worked with amazing nurses, doctors, social workers, admins. Like when you know that the workplace is good and you're still unhappy, that's when you know you need to do something else. And I had that realization in July of this year. I am the type of person to like security and obviously being a full-time nurse, you have that. So me leaving that position and kind of doing this was very new to me. It was very scary. And saying that, it was still the best decision I have made this year. I don't remember much about the first half of this year because I was either just full of all sorts of emotions, anger, frustration, sadness, for different reasons. And like I can't, I don't even remember like plant related stuff that I did in the first half of this year. I'm gonna look. I didn't post a lot. I did once a week, it seems. Again, saying all that, it was the right decision for me, you know, for my mental health. And I'm happy. I'm really happy, guys. You know that saying, time flies when you're having fun? I really cannot believe that four months have gone by. It seems like it's been only like a month. And honestly, in the beginning of 2022, I didn't think I was leaving. I remember specifically talking to one of my coworkers, one of the other nurses, and I told her, I'm gonna be here for another two years. I will figure stuff out with a plant thing. Like I remember telling her that in the beginning of the year. And it's weird how things change, eh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really wanna make any goals for my career right now. I guess like short term stuff, I will for sure. And it's funny because a year ago I asked you guys if I should start a Patreon and I said I was going to do it, but then I didn't. And it's similar to now in the fall. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to start a Patreon. And then I still haven't, but for sure in January. And then I'm going to sell some plants. Um, I'm guessing locally and within Canada only come spring 2023. So those are some short term career Plant stuff, I guess. Okay, also, this morning, I reached 25,000 subscribers. And I know last year, I reached 15,000 subscribers, and I want to dream big, and so my guess of how many subscribers I would have at this point, a year later would be 30,000 subscribers. The way I think about this has changed, but I'm slowly realizing that the most important thing when it comes to people subscribing to your channel is you really have to build a connection with them. And I feel specifically in the second half of this year, I've tried my very best to show my personality. And I mean, that's that was evident in the baking videos. Singing, I never thought in a million years that I would post a singing video. I more so don't wanna focus on the number anymore. I just wanna work on building that connection with you guys. And I knew how amazing and great my subscribers were when I started Vlogmas. I'm absolutely shocked with the viewership from you guys during this month. You guys really are the best. Again, when it came to my viewers, I didn't want it to be like 100% transactional where I would teach you something. And that's all you guys would come here for. Like I wanted to kind of, and it's weird, because I haven't met you guys, but I feel like I know a lot of you based on the people that comment all the time and like the names that I keep seeing. And there's a lot of you that keep commenting after all this time. And I've gotten a lot of messages recently saying like, oh, I was with you when you had 5,000 subscribers. I was with you when you had 10,000 subscribers and you guys stick around. So again, thank you. I would not be here without you. You guys are the best. The biggest thing that I kind of learned about growing plants, content creation, and about myself is that I need to get out of my head. Um, I mentioned this before in the past. I'm in my head a lot when it comes to creating content, 
when it comes to plant tasks and you know always striving for perfection when it comes to content creation and also growing plants but the biggest thing that i've changed in the past couple of months is just doing whatever you want and not worrying what people think not worrying if the content is perfect and I feel so much better now. And it is really represented in the content I posted in December. All the baking stuff. I didn't realize I had, you know, a mini kind of baking community. Um, and, you know, I'm not an expert. Like, I just bake for fun. And there's a bunch of people that went to school to become a pastry chef. And so there's a lot of people that have a background and they're like commenting and helping me. And, you know, it's stuff that I never knew. And it's stuff that I will carry with me in the future. That hot takes video. Um, I wanted to do something like that for a while. I kind of, I don't really look at performance and get really sad and angry if it doesn't perform anymore. It's more of a learning process, but that video didn't do well at all. I enjoyed it. When I look back at all the videos that I've done this month, I enjoyed that one the most and I have zero regrets. That was the most fun filming and I'm, I will be doing one in January as well, so I'm really excited about that one. But that's another example. I would never, I would never think of doing that because am I gonna be hurting someone's feelings? Are people gonna take this the wrong way? You know, a video like this might not perform that well. It's something that your viewers haven't seen. There was just so much I thought about and I just didn't do it because I was thinking of all those things, but I should have just done it because it's something that I wanted to do. That's why I'm so thankful that I decided to do Vlogmas. I really just let go and I just let the creative juices kind of like run through my brain and I just went with it. The singing stuff too. I wanna say close to 10 years ago, I did put out singing videos on YouTube and it's funny cause it was on this channel. I still have those videos, but they're private on this channel. I never thought after I stopped eight years ago that I would ever revisit that. And you guys don't know this but in between my takes specifically plant chore related stuff I'm just singing just to myself and it it really is a part of me because sometimes I don't even realize that I'm singing until I go back and edit the footage and I'm like oh I'm singing this song I don't even remember this and it would happen so many times the two videos that I've posted in December of me singing I just learn to let go because never in a million years would I ever post these videos because there's a lot of breathing issues. There's a lot of pitch issues. Past Kevin would be mortified about those singing videos. Future Kevin or the one today is just so happy with that decision. So I just don't know what else to talk about. I know a lot of people are curious of like the content that I want to do in the future, like in 2023, specific goals when it comes to growing plants. I think the biggest one is just to try to master having anthuriums push out leaves without holes and specifically my queen anthurium and my anthurium waterburianum. I'm going to work on it guys. So I guess that's one goal for 2023 when it comes to growing plants. I really want my my philodendron and melanocrysum to really get bigger. I want my Monstera Thai constellation to continue to grow bigger. And I know she is massive now, but I know she can get bigger. I do have to propagate her though. So she might take a little bit of time, but we will see. I definitely need to get more syndapsis. I need to get more orchids. Those two families, I really want to venture out and get more of. I don't have enough experience with syndapsis, so I just want more. And there's a lot of beauties out there. Like I said, silver cloud, platinum, the tricolor exists, but I'm definitely not getting that one <laughs> soon. And I guess the last thing I'll say is about myself and what I want to carry into the new year. A trait about myself that I know is very true is that I am a very hard worker and I really I really do pride myself having that trait, but I think one thing that I need to work on is taking more risks and just going for things that you want and not being afraid specifically of rejection. So that can be like reaching out to other plant YouTubers and wanting to do, to do a collab. It could be, you know, reaching out to sponsorships because y'all know that I haven't really done a lot. Yeah, I want to just not be afraid in the new year, take risks go for it, don't be afraid of rejection. I don't know what else to say. I am very tired. <laughs> it is Christmas Eve. 
Um, I'm filming this on Christmas Eve. We got a few more days of the year, guys. How exciting. I know I said subscribership isn't a huge deal, but I'm just gonna make a guess anyways. My guess in a year, I'll be at 40,000 subscribers. Again, you guys are great, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Already, I feel like I rambled on for way too long. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I hope everyone has a happy new year. And if you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.